So, Sean, a human, a half elf, and an orc walk into a bar. A dwarf walks under it. <sighs> this week on Geek IV, tabletop games with guest expert Sean Creedon. Welcome to Geek IV, your mainline solution to all your nerd culture needs straight into your bloodstream. You'll be fit and in tip top shape in no time. Well, for a geek. I'm your spirit guide, Claire McRae, and this week we are joined by guest expert Sean Creedon. Thank you for being here, Sean. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's get right into our expert testimony to talk a little bit more about what we're looking at here today. Sure. We're looking at tabletop games, mm -hmm. um, Dungeons and Dragons, Unknown Armies, things of that nature. Good stuff. Yeah, so a lot of people might be familiar with D&D &D and sort of like a little bit of what it's like, but sort of maybe more of the stereotype of what right. it's like. Could you tell me a bit more about what Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop games in general are like? Sure. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is a game for the imaginative. Um, it's a game where you can do whatever you want with whoever you want, and it's a great time. Um, it's really only bound by your limitations. It can do a lot of different things, and it just kind of gives you a world to play in, and you and your friends get to have some fun and have some crazy adventures. Mm -hmm. So if I like games like video games, like Skyrim and stuff like that, would I fit in here? Oh, definitely. Um, there's a system for any kind of genre or world you want to play in. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there is a Skyrim tabletop uh, <laughs> or something that exists in that world, and Elder Scrolls 1. Um, but yeah, it's usually a great time. People who play video games, I have have found, have an interest in it. Um, it's like that, but without all of the obnoxious bindings of controls and that mm -hmm. whole thing. It's basically as much as you think you can imagine yourself, you can't do. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So if I don't really like, there's like the orcs and the elves and all of that jazz, is there still somewhere I can get into tabletop games? Yeah, def I mean, there's, like I said, there's one for any world. There's a Star Wars tabletop, there's ones that take place in the modern world, there's stuff that takes place in Victorian England. Um, That's so cool. It, really, there's one for anything. People are always coming out with new ones. Call of Cthulhu, a uh, <laughs> very popular one, um, kind of that eldritch magic. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to sort of get into it, but it seems like a lot, like it's a really big commitment, isn't it? It can be. Um, I mean, you set your own times, how long you want to play and with who, how big your group is. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, groups can be, you know, three people and a dungeon master, and then you're off and you play for two hours and you play once a week, and that's, you know, you guys can decide whenever you want to play and how you want to play it. Yeah, and so outside of this, we have our own group that plays g uh, a game together a lot of the time, and we've had moments where we've had, like, eight people play <laughs> for four hours straight, and we've had three people play for, like, 90 minutes. It really sort of runs the gamut there, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a huge range. Mm -hmm. It really depends on how, how, what you're comfortable with working with. Is there a certain stigma around tabletop games, would you say? Definitely. I mean, <laughs> we've, all, we've all heard the, the jokes about the nerds sitting around in their dark basement with candlelight and weird music playing D&D, &D, um, you know, slaying dragons and living in a world that isn't quite reality. But it's really much more than that. And oftentimes you'll find when you start talking about Dungeons and Dragons and you invite people, they're like, oh, you know, I, I couldn't play that. And then they'll come to you later and be like, you know, I've, I've always wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons. Can, can, we, can we like figure something out? It's really funny seeing how many people are interested in that imaginative role play um, you, you and living the out people, the fantasy. Yeah, yeah, you get the people who might sit in if you if you convince them to do that and come back next time and be like, listen, I have this <laughs> idea and I think if we try to do this, like, yeah. it's, it's imaginative and I think it can really capture people. Yeah and be really engaging. Yeah, people get really scared by the freedom of choice a lot of time. They look at these giant thick tomes of rule books and mm. they're like, I don't know how to get through all this. But when you have someone walk you through it, it can be a really great time. And oftentimes they'll come back for the second or third campaign and decide they want to do this weird, crazy alteration and suddenly mm -hmm. you know, they're making characters that you've never seen before after playing for several years. Yeah, that's awesome. Why would you say tabletop games are worthwhile? Tabletop games are worthwhile because it is a fantastic way to bond with your friends. Um, you really get to learn everyone's personality, what they like in terms of humor, what they like in terms of action. Um, you really get to see how they see themselves and also how they see each other. It's a great way to you know, team build. You get to work together to problem solve. Um, it's worthwhile mostly because it's a lot of fun. You don't know how many times you walk out of a campaign session with five new inside jokes that everyone looks <laughs> at you weird for when you drop them in conversation. And it's cool, I think, because you do get put in these situations, imaginative, 
they may be, but you get to see your friends and how they work through problems, what their analytical skills are like, what they perceive their own strengths to be like. And I think it's kind of like a character study of their own person, not just of their fictional characters. Definitely. You got the, you got the one guy who's like, do we have to fight them? Can we just go around? And the other dude who's like, oh, let's, I'm kick, ready. Him, let's <laughs> kick in the door. Yeah, let's have a great time. Should be fun. Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> exactly. You got me. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. We're going to move on to our next segment, which will be some tips and tricks and recommendations for anyone who'd like to get into tabletop games. In our segment, Quick Shots. OK, so for my first tip, as someone who's quite new to tabletop games in general, I would say find someone, and you know someone, even if you have to look a little bit, a little bit deeper than you might expect, find someone who's experienced in playing these sorts of games who can help you and guide you through it. Perhaps they could be your DM, which is your dungeon master, especially in Dungeons and Dragons, who can set up the world for you and who can, who can guide you through it and make it easy as possible for you to be immersed in it for the first time. And if you had any recommendations on specific games that people might look at? Yeah. Um, Dungeons and Dragons just came out with their new edition, the fifth edition. Um, streamlined a lot of stuff. A lot of, hearing a lot of good things about it. Mm -hmm. I played a couple sessions. It, it just came out like in August or something. Yeah, like that, right? it was. Yeah, which is the end of last year, fall of last mm -hmm. year. Um, and I've played a couple sessions already, and it's mm, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. A lot of great times. Um, Unknown Armies is a game that takes place in the modern world. So you know, 2015, 2014, or 2000, whenever you want to set it. Um, it's a horror game, so there's a lot of you know paranormal and kind of magic supernatural and going aspects. On. Supernatural. And right. it also might. Be helpful to some people who are like mm, orcs and elves. Uh, and I don't. I don't. I don't know want to relive Lord of the Rings. That. Lord yeah. of the Rings wasn't my favorite movie. Right. That's my favorite movie. That's not true. But if you if you don't like that sort of magical fantasy aspect, this is a good place to like set it in a world you know. It's also a lot easier because you anchor yourself in things that you're familiar with. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we're playing in Brooklyn. Cool. I'm from there. You know, yeah. that's you can build a world that seems more sensical to you. Problem solving gets a lot more easy when a lot easier when you know, you're walking around doing your own thing and you know what you would do yourself and you don't mm -hmm. have to imagine yourself as a giant bulky orc trying to <laughs> manage armor and swords and whatnot. Yeah. Anything else? Um, if you're a fan of fantasy, uh, especially sci-fi, Star Wars tabletop game, um, it's a bit of a different system than Dungeons and Dragons, but, you know, it's still the whole class race system. Um, it's really interesting. I know a lot of people that play it and they have a great time just kind of exploring. It's a huge world, mm -hmm. huge world. Um, and a lot of people like to dive into it and see all the weird backstories and everything. And yeah, and like you said earlier, like if you have any sort of interest in any fandom like Star Wars or fantasy, mm. there's a pretty much a game that exists in tabletop yeah. for you. Go on a quick Google search and you'll find you'll it. You'll find it. Yeah, real fast. And then I'd say the last thing would be do a little bit of research, take a few notes. Mm -hmm. It's a big world, it's a big game, and it's kind of complicated, but that just makes it more rewarding when you get all of these options when you do get into it. So before you start, maybe do a Google search. Yeah. Maybe ask some friends for advice, and I think you'll have a, a really great time. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for your tips. Thank you. All right, that's all for this week. We would have played a campaign for our geek games, but it would have taken three hours. hours. Three, three hours. Three hours. Thanks so much to Sean Creedon for coming on our show and talking about tabletop games with me. I will see you next week when we flood our systems with cosplay and Ren Fairs. I'm Claire McRae, and this is Geek IV.